This is a video of a surgery that I did recently. It was rather challenging and difficult in its own right. The patient was a 34-year-old female. She had both eyes microophthalmos with microcornea and iris and fundal coloboma. The corneal diameter was only 7 millimeters. Hence, a 2.2 millimeter incision would be a rather used incision for such a small cornea. The patient also had substantial amount of nystagmus. A parabulbar block was given to counter this. Side port incisions have been made now. The anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue. A clear corneal incision was made with a 2.2 mm keratotome. The capsular axis was also very challenging. There was a coloboma inferiorly. So centering the rexus over the lens was very difficult. It would not completely dilate at one end and was exposing the whole crystalline lens at the other end. Presence of a coloboma meant that there would be no zonules inferiorly and hence doing a rexus in this region was extremely tricky. Finally, despite all the challenges, I managed to have an adequate capsular excess and we could proceed with the hydro dissection. The hydro dissection is a very crucial part in this surgery because the nucleus has to be absolutely loose and mobile and rotate easily for us to do a safe phaco surgery. I was successful in completely rotating the nucleus smoothly and hence we proceeded with the phaco part of the surgery. As we can well imagine, phaco surgery in such cases is extremely difficult because the corneal diameter is so small, the probe suddenly looks very big once it enters into the eye, the chamber is rather shallow. This was almost a nearly mature cataract and to worsen things, the coloboma in the inferior quadrant meant that there would be no zonules over there. I proceed with my routine stop and chop technique. First making a groove in the nucleus and then dividing it into two hemispheres. Thankfully, the nucleus was a little brittle and I could easily get two hemispheres after the first initial sculpting. Then I proceeded with the chop. I had lower parameters set so as to not put too much of a strain on the zonules. I managed the first chop and thanks to a good hydro dissection and a hydro delineation the pieces came out easily. I filled the bag with sodium hyaluronate to keep it nice and taut for the second half of the surgery. Then beginning the second half, I rotated the nucleus. We have to be a little bit careful because in this case we are rotating the nucleus to a part where there are no zonules. So keeping a very close look at the capsular bag, the rotation was done. And then I proceeded with the chop for the second hemisphere of the lens. I had to be very careful that I was actually removing only the segments of the nucleus from the bag and not pulling the bag or putting any stroins on the rest of the zonules while doing so. The trick is to proceed very slowly with low parameters. While phaco emulsifying the quadrants of the nucleus, I had to be also very careful that the chamber was extremely shallow and hence the endothelium would be very close to these pieces of nucleus. I chopped the nuclear quadrants into smaller pieces to avoid bringing out a big piece and brushing against the endothelium. With whatever care possible, I finally succeeded and managed to remove the whole nucleus from the eye.
I did a biomanual irrigation aspiration and it proceeded as routine. We again have to be a little careful while doing the inferior quadrant since there are no zonules there and we have to slowly prise out the cortical matter from the bag. The lens implant itself was a challenge. I had to increase the incision size to 2.8 millimeters. Since the IOL power was 38.5 diopters, it had to be custom made because it was not available in the routine range of IOLs. And this lens was rather thick. So I had to load it properly into the cartridge and then we proceeded for the implantation. The implantation itself was a challenge because as one end of the lens reached the capsular back, the other end was still outside and I had to slowly push it in. I engaged the trailing haptic loop under the rexus and then managed to push the whole lens into the bag. I heaved a sigh of relief once it was all done. This is the first week follow up of the patient. The cornea looks nice and clear and the patient is extremely happy with her vision. Now she insists on doing the other eye which is going to be even greater challenge. Thank you.